you know, if y'all want to ask Dr. Williams any questions, uh, you know, I'll, he'll, he'll answer. If he knows something about it, I'm sure he'll know it. He'll answer it for you. So did anybody got, have any questions? When did the wooden boathouse burn? Do you know when the wooden boathouse burnt down on Mayo? The wooden bridge? The, 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 uh, the wooden boathouse. When the boat club burned, do you know what, about what year that was? Uh, I don't remember don't what know. year it was. I'm thinking like late 30s, somewhere around there, just yeah. from what some of the pictures we saw. Um, I don't remember the don't date, remember it, but it burned. But it burned. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anybody else have a question? Uh, yeah, she's asking you, to, and I, I have a lot of pictures of things like that that he told me the story. So picture the amusement park at the Stone House at Forest Hill. And now, Dr. Williams, she's asking to tell a little bit of the story about the amusement park at Forest Hill Avenue. So tell us about Forest Hill Park. Whoops, Excuse me. We don't walk you in the head. Okay. So, <coughs> so what was the Stone House, and then tell us what was around it. The stone house was surrounded by a building, uh, <clears throat> sort of a wraparound building. And in that wraparound building uh, was the Penny Arcade and the Fun House. And one of the, the things in the Fun House was a, was a board that when you stepped on the board, it would... would He's doing this. Would, in would, other words, this way, it was hard to stand up on the board. <coughs> And then some guy, <coughs> excuse me, rigged up uh, some kind of a blowing apparatus that, uh, that uh, in certain selected cases, he would turn the air on and would blow the dresses of these ladies <laughs> up over the head. He said but, that uh, didn't last long. I think he was, <laughs> he was quite selective about who he <laughs> <laughs> But uh, it would blow the dresses up over the head. And... And uh, uh, that uh, was a little bit embarrassing, but uh, I think he knew what he was doing. <laughs> um, so the stone house, the, the arcade was around it. Yeah. And then where was the roller coaster from there? Because I have the picture of the roller coaster, and I had a hard time understanding where that was until he told me. Well, the, the, it was just a few steps uh, to the left, if you were going in like this, because they, they, they had a building there with the, with the carousel in it, you know, the hobby horses, as we called them. Uh, and then they had uh, a row of uh, buildings with uh, uh, where you would, would uh, a stream run down there, you would fish and, and pull out a fish with a number on it. And then they, they had... Uh, uh, What did you call the roller coaster? Because there are a lot of we, different We names. used to call it the dip-to-dips, or the dips. I've heard, I, told him, I told him in my book I call it the uh, Dixie Flyer, because that's what Mr. Goldberg, who's a 93-year-old Jewish man, that say, oh, it's, that's Dixie Flyer. He says, no, it's the dips. I said, I don't yeah. care what you call it. They enjoyed it. So, yeah. so, you, so you had the roller coaster right near, um, right near the um, merry-go-round. Yeah. And then did you go down to the, did you go to the spring? I'm sh in the, in yeah, the they, had a, they had a spring. It was on the way down to the lake. See, they had a lake that uh, you would go down. But, uh, and a boathouse and everything. And a boathouse, and, and, uh, and they had boats down there. Did, I think I've asked you before, you don't remember ever hearing them call, anybody call any of the springs the nursery spring? Is that name? Because I've got a picture that says the nursery spring, and I don't know what it is. No. Okay, so if anybody's ever heard of the nursery spring, let me know. I've never heard that term, but my great uncle, I mean, my great grandfather put it in his notes. Yeah. All right, so you have the, the, the swim. Did you go swimming there? Did you ever go swimming there? Or were you in, you were in the quarry? <laughs> he was naked in the quarry. I should have known. Okay, in, uh, so that's the, that's the arcade area. Um, what else does anybody need? Tell them about the Dutch market and your family in the Dutch market. And 
the, the Dutch market uh, over at 7th and Franklin Street, uh, my father would go over there uh, uh, on Saturday night. <clears throat> and this was back during the, the sure enough depression when uh, he was out of work and, and times were tough. And when the Dutch market closed on, on Saturday, they didn't keep anything over the weekend. So all their baked goods, uh, rolls and, and cakes and pastries and everything, they were just dumbed for the trash. And so my father and I would go over there with a burlap bag on the streetcar and gather up all that stuff in a burlap bag and bring it home on the streetcar and my mother would rebake it so that we would have something to eat. So uh, yeah. th that was back during the Depression when, when uh, my father was out of work for long periods of time. He was a carpenter and uh, uh, he didn't have a job for a long time. And so uh, we saw some tough times, uh, but uh, that's the way it have to be. I had two brothers and one sister. Okay. Are so, you the only one left? Yeah. Are you the only one left? I, I yeah. Ask you that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, she's asking, when did you go to medical school? And that brings up another good story. She <laughs> wanted to know when you went to medical school, and you need to tell the story about when you went to the hospital, too. I know I know your grandchildren would like to hear that. So, <laughs> again. So, so she's asking, when did you go to medical school? What year? I started medical school uh, in 1944. Uh, now tell the story about you going to the hospital. Uh, this will make y'all skin <laughs> fall. Okay. I was uh, uh, I was diagnosed. Uh, I was passing blood in my urine. And I was diagnosed as a, what they call acute glomerulonephritis, which is a complication of, of a strep infection. So I had, a, I had a strep infection resulted in glomerulonephritis, which is a kidney thing uh, that uh, causes damage to the kidney. So I was passing blood into my urine, and I, and I got severely anemic. So the, the doctor who was attending me, decided to hospitalize me at the old Memorial Hospital over there at 12th and Broad. And uh, conditions weren't too good uh, uh, because they, they, they were, were roaches and bed bugs. And, this was and, DDT, you said. Yeah, they didn't have any insecticides. And they were taking down the beds next to me, and uh, the orderly would would, uh, would take a, a paddle and beat the bed bugs out of the mattress, and uh, they'd take a blowtorch and then uh, a gasoline blowtorch and stand the springs up just next to my bed and and uh, <laughs> with a blowtorch and. Uh, uh, and uh, burn those springs, and uh, of course, roaches and bed bugs were, were all over the place, and it, it wasn't a. Uh, uh, that's just a way. No insecticides or anything. Uh, and you, got real, you got better really fast after that. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you want to go home. But, but anyway, the, the, that's the way it was. They they didn't have any uh, uh, control. Uh, uh, they were just. The, the whole hospital was infested with bed bugs and, and roaches. Now, I'm, gonna tell, I'm not going to tell a whole lot of specifics, but we probably mentioned going to the courthouse. Now, he lived a block and a half away from the Manchester courthouse. So whenever there was anything going on at the courthouse, all the kids were there to see. So tell us a little bit about going to the, tell us about going to the courthouse and where you, how you'd sit there and what you'd hear. 
the, the Dakotas uh, was at Tenth and Hull, and they had these low windows. And of course, in the summertime, they, they, without any air conditioning, they had the windows all open. And so people uh, in the park uh, would sit in the windows and observe what was going on in the courthouse. So we uh, 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 was able to observe what was going on in the courthouse. Now you told you named the bailiff. He knows everything. You named the bailiff. Who was the bailiff in the courthouse? The bailiff was uh, Sergeant Willard. Uh, and you said his son was the worst kid in school, didn't you? Yeah, he <laughs> <laughs> was. He was Sergeant Willard, and uh, he would every once in a while holler out, "Order in the courthouse." <laughs> so, so when Robley's uncle was in the courthouse, he was oh. in there to see what the, what the verdict was. I see the Santa River. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, but now you also, in your medical career, tell us where your, where your medical practice was, where your office was, and then you tell them where you related to in relation to Dr. Shelton, which mm -hmm. is down the road. So where was your medical office? Well, I started out my medical practice with an, Dr. Hooker on Hull Street, uh, and I stayed with him uh, for five years. And then I moved my office. Uh, uh, when his son came to practice, uh, I moved and joined forces with another doctor, Dr. Charles Young, and we opened the office on Sims Avenue. And uh, at 28th and Sims. 28th and Sims. And I stayed there for 20 years. And you and down the road, just a little ways, was Dr. Shelton. That's right. right. Dr. Shelton and, is related to and, Robert. Yeah, and, and Dr. Shelton uh, used to trade calls. Right. When I asked him, I said, Robbie came over and asked him, do you by any chance remember Dr. Shelton? He says, remember him? We used to trade calls. So. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, we, we trade calls. Yeah. Any other questions? Anybody? So in the early century of watching the human change, what's the most significant and memorable change in the life He says, over your lifetime of living right here in Richmond, what's the most significant change you've seen in the in your life? That's a hard one. I don't know. Uh, That's a tough question. I know. I, know. I mean, it, it's so much. I, I, I don't know. Uh, just, I would have to study that a little bit because well, it's so. I, I, told him, I told him this is his first time here. I'm sure y'all will want him back. So I told him this is just the first night. So. Where is the tall on your streetcar line? Is it on the forest field? She's asking along the streetcar line. The streetcar line. Uh, we used to call it the Perry Street Line, but it started uh, uh, well. Well, it it started on on uh, North Side and, and came across uh, uh, the Ninth Street Bridge, and and it turned on on Seventh Street and went over to to uh, to Perry Street and took a right on Perry and went up Perry Street to Warden Avenue, took another right to go over to, to Sims Avenue, and then up Sims Avenue uh, to Forest Hill Park. And then it, it made a circle uh, so that it didn't have to turn around. It, it circled in the park and came back down uh, right by Patrick Henry School, crossed over Reedy Creek, uh, on a trestle. My 93-year-old neighbor and friend from church said that she rode the number three car, is what she said. She was the number three car yeah. that she rode so, in those days. And they frequently had ransom summer cars where the benches were were okay. crossways right. and the the uh, conductor would walk on a on a, uh, a, a, a sort of a walkway on each side and collect fares and then he would uh, 
have a, a when he would get a bunch of fares, then he would get into the inn and pull a, a a cord to register the number of fares he had taken. Well, I had a patient one time who told me that when he was young, he worked on the streetcars, and he was a little bit uh, hesitant about ringing up all the fares that he had collected. <laughs> he, he admitted that uh, that he said, you know, he said, I, I knocked down a little bit on him because he said I wasn't getting paid too good. <laughs> But uh, they had these summer cars, and uh, he would, uh, with a walkway on each side and park benches across like that. And he would go up and down one side or the other and collect fares. And then the, the register was at the end, and so he'd had a whole bunch of fares. And when he got in at the end, he said, well, I'd pull the cord two or three times, but... but uh, <laughs> I don't think... I Oh. Everybody I know, everybody I know says they either, you know, squashed in real low and, and didn't pay, or they opened the back door and let somebody well, in, or they picked up transfers on the ground, or they, you know, well, when they worked there, they didn't claim them. All I know is I don't think anybody paid. So yeah. Any other questions that anybody has for us? But like I said, I believe you've got there's, somebody there's to come back. Did you hear that? One of the, she says one of the Forest Hill Carousel horses lives in uh, Kilmarnock now. Uh -huh. So well, he'll be he'll be out there to ride it. Tommy Nichols has it. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> they do, and they have a streetcar at the Historical <coughs> Society that you can go see, and we believe we've got a picture of it, but we can't get the streetcar man to move over. And in the picture so we can get that last little bit of the number. But I think it's the same one. And anything else anybody needs to ask? Because like I said, I believe you'll get him. I believe he'll come back. He loves to tell his story. So I believe he'll come back another time for y'all. So. Okay. Well, um, they, uh, I got drafted, and went, uh, I was being treated for the asthma. And uh, when I went over there for the draft board uh, to be examined, I was wheezing so bad <laughs> that they, 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 they turned me down. Okay, so you did, he didn't have to go to college? Then he went to college? Yeah, so that, that was one of the reasons you went. Oh, okay, so you didn't get drafted, you didn't go off to war, so you went to the University of Richmond instead. <laughs> Yeah, Got it. Okay. that's what allowed me to go back to school. Okay. All right, well, thank y'all. Mm -hmm. Okay, you did good. Well, thank you so much. Yeah.